Let's take a look at the line graph questions. Um, all of these are non-calculated, by the way. So question number one, we need to draw a line graph to represent this data. Now, with time being on the top, that's normally an indication that time should take the horizontal x-axis and therefore temperature would take the uh, vertical axis. And again, I'm going to mark in here that we are in degrees C. So always uh, note down the units. Now the time goes from uh, midnight to midday. Um, so I'm going to put midnight here. And I think every second line, I'm going to put the next time, which makes sense because then that means if this is midnight, this is one o'clock, then this is two o'clock. I mean, we could write in one o'clock and three o'clock, but there's not much space. So let's just uh, go up in two. So this here would be six in the morning, eight in the morning, 10 and midday. And that's great because that um, fits perfectly. The temperature goes from, uh, from six to 16. Well, we're going to start at zero and on the scale we want to go up to 16 maybe just a tiny bit beyond 16 but we're not going to do a scale going up to 100 because that would be fairly pointless so let's go up in two so that's two four six eight ten twelve fourteen sixteen eighteen perfect now all we need to do is plot one two three four five six seven points so at midnight it's six degrees so midnight six mark it with an x 2 a.m. 7 so this is 2 a.m. and 7 is halfway between 6 and 8 so I'll put an x there 4 a.m. is 8 so there's 4 a.m. there's 8 6 a.m. is 10 8 a.m. is 13 there's 12 there's 14 so there is 13 10 a.m. is 15 10 a.m. is this line here so halfway between 14 and 16 will be there and at midday it's 16. We're nearly there, all we need to do is draw a line from point to point. Using a ruler would be better obviously. Um, so we're literally going from point to point, we're not drawing a line that cuts through the middle or anything like this. So the line graph is point to point to point to point. So there is our finished line graph. Question number two, we need to interpret the line graph. How many cars were sold on Thursday? Well, let's go to Thursday and up. And that is one less than 20, so that is 19 cars. On which day was there the most number of cars sold? Well, which dot is the highest? It's this one here, and that corresponds to Saturday. How many cars were there sold in total between Monday and Saturday? Well, let's work out. So Monday is 19, Tuesday, is uh, 25, Wednesday is 15, 16, 17, 18, Thursday is 19, Friday is 24, and Saturday is 34. Um, unfortunately, we're not allowed to use a calculator, so we're gonna have to be careful adding these numbers up. But if you add them up, you should come to the final answer, which is 139 cars. For question three, we need to draw another line graph um, so we've got time on the top row, so that is going to be the horizontal axis, so that is time and that is minutes. And a lot up the side we have number of customers. So the time goes from 0 to 60, so I'm going to go up in 5 minute increments, so 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 40, 50, 60, and that fits perfectly. And for customers, we're going up to 35. So I think if we go up in uh, in fives, that would be uh, the best thing to do. So that's gonna be five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Shame the rest of the graph uh, paper that I've selected here is wasted, uh, but well, it is what it is really. So zero minutes corresponds to two customers. So zero, two, 10, is eight, so here is 10 and eight customers will be there. 20 is 19, so fifth, uh, that's one less than 20, so that'll be that line there. 30 is 28, 25, 26, 27, 28. Oh, would have helped if I'd gone, only went up to 30 there, so if I go 35 and then 40, actually that makes a bit more sense as well. Um, so 40 is 33, so 30, 31, 32, 33. 50 is 32, 
50, 51, uh, 30, 31, 32, and 60 is 35. So we've drawn all the points. Now all we need to do is draw a line from point to point. Again, using a ruler would be uh, would be better, of course. And there is our completed line graph. Question number four, we're using this line graph to um, interpret. So we want to know what 48 inches is in feet. So let's find, uh, first of all, inches is on the vertical axis. So let's find 48, here's 40. There's 60, so 50 is in between. So it's hard to say exactly where uh, 48 is going to be, but let's just take this line here as approximately 48. Could be exactly 48, there we go. Um, right, and luckily that corresponds with exactly four feet. Now we want to convert seven feet into inches. So let's go and find seven feet. Feet are on the horizontal axis, so seven is here. Let's go up and see where it hits the graph and go across and it's this point here. So we are going up in increments of four, 84, 88, 92, 96, 100. So that would be 84 inches. And we're gonna use the graph to, uh, to work out what 10 feet is in inches. Now, the issue here is that 10 feet is, um, well, it's off, this, it's off the scale here, but what we can do is just, well, we, we know that four feet is 48 inches. We know that seven feet is 84 inches. So we've got two conversion rates. So we could use that just to work out what 10 feet is, but actually five feet is nice and easy. Five is half of 10 as well. So five feet corresponds to 60 inches. So if five equals 60, then 10 is gonna equal 120 inches. Question number five, we need to interpret a line graph to um, answer some questions here. So what score did the student who did six hours of revision get? Well, amount of revision is along the bottom. So let's find six hours. So this is the student that did six hours of revision and he got a score of 60, 62, 64%. The highest score in the maths test was the highest dot, which is this one here. So that is 80, 82, 84, 86%. 5C, another student is added to the line graph who did three and a half hours of revision, estimate their score on the test. Uh, it's a bit of an unusual question here, given that the line goes up and down, but let's all we can do is just assume that if three and a half hours would correspond to this point on the line here, which is well, the line above 50, so we can just say approximately 52%. I'm sure in the mark scheme, plus or minus a percent won't be a problem, plus it is only an estimate after all, so 52%. Okay, so for this question, we need to plot a graph. Um, the age of phone is gonna be across the bottom on our x-axis. Now we've got plenty of space, so I think it'd be a mistake to go zero, one, two, three, four. So then what's the point in all this graph paper to the right of it? So I'm gonna make every second thick line a unit of one, so here's zero, there's one, two, three, four. So there's a little bit of wastage, but nothing ridiculous. And up here, I wanna go up to, well, the maximum value is 4.5. So I'll go a little bit beyond that to five. So maybe it will work if I go one, two, three, four. Nah, not quite, um, slightly annoying. So maybe I will just go up to uh, one, two, three, four, and that top one will be my 4.5. Ideally, I would have gone a little bit beyond the maximum value, uh, but um, well, it is what it is. So a phone that is zero years old has a screen on the time of 4.5 hours. So, so first of all, let's label the axis. So age of phone, and that is in years. And here, this is uh, screen on time and that is in hours. So a phone that is zero years old, 4.5, make an X there. One, 4.1, so one, four, 4.1. Two goes to 3.6, three goes to three, and four goes to 2.3, two, 2.1, 2.2, 2 2.3. And now all I need to do is with a ruler, just draw a line from point to point like so. And there we go, there is our line graph. 
Um, the mark scheme shows it fairly uh, pretty similar, although interestingly they had a slightly bigger bit of graph paper, so they were able to go up to uh, five hours there. Now part B says we need to use the line graph to estimate the screen on time of a phone that is 2.5 years old. So I'm going to use the one that in the mark scheme as it's a, a slightly more accurate graph. So all we need to do is go across to 2.5 and we're going to go up and see where it hits the line. Now it hits the line here and we're just going to take a reading across. Now it's difficult to get this um, absolutely spot on. So usually there is a bit of leeway in the mark scheme. So here's three. 3.1, 3.2, 3.3. So I'd say that's 3.3 hours. I think 3.4 hours would probably be um, accepted as well, perhaps. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty confident that 3.3 hours is probably the best answer here. And finally, question seven here. We are using a graph for conversion purposes. So we want to convert four pounds to dollars. So we can see pounds along the bottom. So four pounds corresponds to um, this part of the line here and that corresponds to one line below six um, So we need to work out the scale here. So 4.0 4.4 4.8 So we're going up in point fours because 2 divided by 5 is 0 0.4 um, And that is therefore what did I say 5.6 so five dollars and sixty cents we want to convert $4.80 to pounds. So here's $4, $4.40, quite close to where we were before. And that is this point here on the graph. And if we just draw a line down, that corresponds to, so here we're going up in increments of 20 pence, three pounds, three pounds 20, that's three pounds 40.